Pastor. Pastor. Paul said, Philippians 4, 11. For I speak not in regard of need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. That's, it, that's right. I know how to abase. I know how to abide. Yes. And in everywhere and in all things, Hallelujah. I have learned both to be full and hungry, both to abound and suffer need. Mm. But most importantly, Pastor, yes, most sir. importantly, ILM, we have learned to be content. Mm. Hallelujah. Welcome back. This is Satisfied Singles. Amen. Uh, amen. And we're talking to some satisfied singles. So, Pastor, let's remind the ILM singles what journey we have been on for the last two weeks. And that is that it is a gift to be single. It's a gift to be single. It sure is. It's a is. biblical gift, actually. <laughs> to be single um, and, and being single it's like many other things um, just as pastor read the scripture that we have to learn to be content in all things and so in learning things we have to grow because sometimes truth is the reality of many things is that we're not content hmm. but the Bible teaches us that we should be content in all things and so I want to talk to you all I'm still just here to encourage the single people. Amen. Not everybody wants to be married, and um, some people enjoy being single. And I would say that whatever state you find yourself in, enjoy that moment in that season. That's right. So here it is. It's not wrong to be married. It's not wrong to stay single either. However, a lot of times people who are single will have the... can sometimes overlook the gift of being single. One of the things that being single, how it's a blessing, it protects you from being in a terrible or unbiblical marriage. Mm. See, a lot of times we just see marriages like, oh, I want to do that, but do you know what comes with all of that? Mm. A lot of times, many um, single Christian people, they wish they were married, and they might think, mm, well, I'm, I'm, I might be able to appreciate being single more, not realizing how unhappy you could be if you were trapped inside of a dysfunctional marriage. My, my, my. There are a lot of dysfunctional marriages. Mm. When you take two single dysfunctional people mm. and they come together, you're not going to have a marriage that is healthy if both people are dysfunctional. And then the other thing is about marriage for those who listen in that you have two imperfect people that's coming together that's making a covenant relationship. So to the single people, what happens, you're ready for marriage and, and, and you're really excited about getting married. But then when you get married, this person, they portrayed to be something that they really wasn't. They're not really um, growing spiritually. They're not really a believer of Jesus Christ. Mm. And so now you're what? You're trapped mm. possibly in a dysfunctional marriage. So again, I don't want to minimize the pain of anyone who feels or who desires to be married. But as Christian singles, it would do well for you to realize that marriage itself is not really the desire of their hearts. Mm -hmm. But the desire of your heart and being married, it should be for a healthy, enjoyable marriage. Yeah. That's what you really should want. So if you're single, it means that if you're not in an unhealthy or hurtful relationship, that's a gift from God. Mm. I'm going to say that again. If you're single and you're not in an unhealthy relationship or 
hurtful marriage, that is a gift from God. There are many women, many men who mm. are married and they are miserable. Yeah. And sometimes they're just perpetrating. They have masks on, wearing masks as though they were really happy. And then some make it no secret. Like, yeah, I'm married, but ain't so what? But it shouldn't be so what? Because no, it's a covenant it relationship. Right. Remember, it's a gift from God mm. to be single. Learn to be content in it. Mm. It's really better to be single than it is to be married to someone who's not following the Lord. Mm. Can you imagine being a believer as a single person and then you hook up, you connect because you got impatient mm. or you became thirsty or desperate and felt like that would bring the, the that would give you everything that you need? But everything that you need, God has it. Mm. Amen. Amen. Everything that everything. you need, God has it. Go ahead, Pastor. You know, Pastor, um, also it's come to our attention that some of us look at being single as a burden. Mm -hmm. Now, no it's interesting burden. the way we look at blessings and burdens, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can have a blessing and you can look upon the blessing as a burden. And you can do this because you have no full understanding that what you're blessed with or what you have is a blessing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the fact that you're good. single and you're not in a bad marriage and you're not in a Come wreck on. relationship and you're yeah. not in an abusive situation. Ooh, that's good, and that Pastor. you can make decisions on your own when you want to, how you want to, why you Listen want to. Single. That's a big one. Why you want to. You ever not want to explain yourself to somebody? Yeah. You are in a position where you do not have to do that. And yet, you want the other burden of being married. Mm. The other burden. Because, see, both have their responses and both have their responsibility. That's right. You follow what I'm saying? And so you can look at the one state that you're in as a burden yeah. and try to get the blessing on the other side, which is, in your case, it would be marriage. And then you can jump out of the frying pan into the fire. Yeah. Ooh. Because you don't understand what a burden is to you. How a burden guides you, how you perceive the burden mm. and what you do with it determines whether the burden is to crush you or to teach you. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. That's good. That was Amen. good. That was good, Pastor. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you all look at Matthew chapter 19, verses mm -hmm. 7 through 12, and yes. I really um, would ask that you would go back and that you would read seven through ten on your own but i want to read verses 11 through 12 to you and this really was jesus teaching about being celibate mm. and so it says but he said to them all cannot accept this saying but only those to whom it has been given mm. i'm at verse 12 for there are eunuchs who were born eunuchs from their mother's womb then there are eunuchs who were made eunuchs by mm. men and they are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Mm -hmm. He who is able to accept it, let him accept it. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's so important that that you value who you are because God finds you valuable. Mm -hmm. And don't mm -hmm. go around just being willy-nilly and just, you know, giving your body, whether you're a man to that woman because she has a high sexual libido or even you as a woman giving your body to that man because you have a high sexual libido. But know your worth. Know your self-worth and how valuable, you, how valuable you are to God. Remember that God says that you're the apple of his eye. Mm. And it's just like we had on Sunday that Pastor Kofi taught that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. And you have to get that in your spirit and realize that nothing is impossible for God. Mm. And so while you have the time in the season that God ha currently has you in or the season that you choose to be in because you're not thirsty, you just want to be encouraged, learn to develop good, healthy relationships. Learn to spend time with God. Get in a more close and intimate relationship with him so that if you choose to be married, that you'll be healthier going into that marriage. It don't mean that trials and tribulations won't happen in the marriage mm -hmm. because they will come, but maybe you'll be better equipped to handle that Absolutely. if you decide to get married. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We're going to go over, um, should we wait till next week? Um, 
give him a teaser and then we'll go into it. <laughs> okay, so next week, uh -huh. <laughs> next week we're going to talk about biblical singleness is a gift that can teach you how to be content in Christ even when life is not how you want it to be. Amen. Mm. I'm going to come from James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4. So see, you can get a head start. James chapter 1 mm. verses 2 through 4. When life is not the way you want it to be. Yeah. Amen. That's juicy enough to tune in, don't you think, Pastor? Yes, yes. Amen. Well, we will see you right here, bright and late, 7 p.m. on next week Tomorrow. on our singles. But I'm speaking oh, on this subject here on the, the, the satisfied single version of our Inspired Life Ministry telecast. And so listen, always remember that we love you. But before we get to that part, I want to invite someone that may be looking at yeah, us and they may Lord. not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And so the first step towards their success is for them to do so, for them to accept the Lord Jesus. And so I invite you this evening to accept the Lord Jesus. Say, Lord, come into my life. Lord, come into my life. Save me. Save me. Make me new. Make me new. Change my life. Change my life. And fill me full of your Holy and Spirit. fill me full of your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And so if you've prayed that prayer, reach out to us and let us know so we can support you. Amen. Amen. Because you deserve support, not condemnation. Amen. Uh, amen goes right amen. there. ILM loves you but more importantly god loves you peace now blessings we'll see you tomorrow yeah i apologize pastor ain't no thing pastor thank you we're gonna see them tomorrow yeah we are we love y'all love you all right